Being able to have a conversation is a goal for most students of Chinese, be it with loved ones, for professional purposes, or for travel. But what if you think conversations are too scary, too difficult, or just impractical? Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about voice messaging and how that can be used to learn Chinese. More specifically, we're going to see how it can be used as a stepping stone to better conversations. For most people who learn a foreign language, having a conversation can be rather scary, and especially if you're a beginner, of course, because you don't know, you don't have the confidence to speak the foreign language. I remember the first time I had a conversation on the phone with a stranger in Chinese, and this was a person who interviewed me for a scholarship and asked me some very basic questions. This was maybe after I'd studied for a few months, and I definitely knew enough to technically answer these questions. Like I understood the questions, and I did have the vocabulary, grammar, and so on. But I simply froze up completely. I had no idea what to say, and then I tried to say that I was too、uh, nervous to speak. And I couldn't come up with the word for nervous either, so I ended up saying like basically nothing. And in this case, it was fine because the scholarship was for beginners, so I wasn't required to be able to speak Chinese at all, and it was fine. I ended up getting the scholarship, which is probably why I'm here today. And this podcast certainly wouldn't exist without that scholarship. I would classify myself as rather introverted when it comes to learning languages, and I certainly don't feel comfortable talking to strangers, and I don't strike up conversations with them either. If I have something to talk about, and it's a nice environment to do so, of course I don't mind talking, and I like discussing with people and so on. But I don't like talking with strangers, and I find it very difficult to talk with people at all before I actually get far enough in a language to do so comfortably. If you're the kind of person who strikes up conversations with people around you all the time and enjoy trying out all the Chinese you've learned on unsuspecting passersby who happen to speak Chinese, well, then this podcast is maybe not for you. There are some things here you can use for sure, but this is more for people who find that conversations can be rather taxing,、uh, rather scary, and also quite difficult. Naturally, beginners always find conversations to be difficult because there's a lot of things going on. You have to understand what someone else is saying, while you also have to think about what you are going to say and how to interact with this other person. And that bit, even extrovert people obviously find difficult. And using voice messaging can help all learners in this regard. So before we look at how to use this and what the benefits are, let's actually discuss briefly what voice messaging is. So most chat apps these days have a function where you can record audio and send it as a message to the other person. It works exactly like chatting in text, except that you are now recording your own voice and you're listening to the other person, and you can mix the two in most apps. In my experience, most people don't use this; they prefer to type. But maybe you've tried it out in your native language, and if you haven't, you can check in your favorite chat app, and you'll probably find a little microphone button that allows you to record a message. And I'm not talking about speech to text here. So you're not saying something, dictating something, and your phone is transcribing it into text and then sending it. I'm talking about sending actual audio messages. And of course, this can be very convenient because it allows you to send messages even when you are unable to type. But in this episode, we are going to talk about using this feature for learning Chinese. And more specifically, we're going to talk about how to use it as a stepping stone to conversations. Because in a way, these voice messages take away certain things that make real-time conversation quite difficult. So let's look at six reasons why you should try out voice messages. Number one, it relieves anxiety and pressure to perform. So, like I said in the introduction, many students feel anxious when it comes to talking face to face with a native speaker, especially if you've never done it before or if you've just done it a few times. When you record voice messages, it is like a real conversation, but you have more time to think, and you can process what they are saying and think a little bit about what you want to say, and so on, which takes away a lot of the pressure that can easily come from being required to give a quick answer or to understand what someone says immediately. Number two, you can prepare your own voice messages before sending them, and this is a little bit like writing. So when you write, you can of course think about what words to use and which order to put them in, and so on. And you can even maybe look things up that you think you ought to know how to say, but you may be forgotten. And you can of course do these things with voice messages too. I don't suggest that you write things down and then read what you're saying because that's too far removed from actual speaking. But I am suggesting that you take a little bit of time to think about what to say and how to say it, and then you record it. Of course, if you feel comfortable with a native speaker, you can experiment with the language with them. But remember, this is if you don't feel comfortable doing that or if you can't do it. 
Number three, you can record again if you're not happy with the result. As you are recording a message and hearing yourself speak Chinese, you can sometimes hear mistakes that you maybe practiced a lot recently and don't want to make again, and then you can just abort or cancel the message and try again. It could also just be that you forget how to say something and you just want a second try. And again, you can do this in a real-time conversation, but it requires you to be comfortable making mistakes, and it can sometimes also try the patience of the person you're talking to. But if you're recording your messages, you can abort and cancel and just record again. Depending on the app, you might be able to listen to the whole message before you send it. So you first record it, then listen to it, and then send it. But in most apps, you are only able to cancel the message as it is being recorded. So when you're done, it's essentially sending the message. Of course, you can usually listen to it and then delete it afterwards if you want to, although that might still be picked up by the other person. So check out how the app works so you can actually cancel messages if you want to. Number four, you can listen many times if you don't understand the first time. In a normal conversation, you normally hear what someone says once, and unless you ask them to repeat themselves, you will not hear the thing they say again. And sometimes, and this is actually quite often when you talk with native speakers, if you ask them to repeat, they will seldom repeat exactly what they said. They might say something similar, they might rephrase it, choose different words, or sometimes even switch to English or something like that. But if you just want them to repeat exactly what they said again, they will often not do so. But if you have a voice message, you can play back exactly what they said, and you can play it back as many times as you want. Listening comprehension in a new language is very complex, and you rarely have time to process everything at once. So listening more will usually allow you to understand more, even if no other information is added, or even if you don't look anything up. Of course, you can look things up either by guessing the pinyin and inputting it into your favorite dictionary, or maybe by playing the voice message to your phone so it can try to deduce what it is using the speech-to-text function, and then you look up the characters in a dictionary. Number five, you can save conversations for later. Most chat apps, of course, have logging, so you can go back to your earlier messages, and this can work to your benefit in several ways. First, you can listen to your own messages from, you know, six months ago and see maybe if your pronunciation have improved, or maybe you had a conversation recently that you didn't feel went very well and you were unable to express what you wanted, and the other person found it difficult to understand you. Uh, maybe you can take that conversation and show it to a tutor or a friendly native speaker and ask them to kind of help you out. What went wrong here? How could I have expressed myself more clearly? Is there a problem with my grammar, maybe pronunciation, or something else that made this conversation not flow very nicely? Number six, messages can be recorded and listened to whenever you have time. Of course, a real-time conversation, even if it is online, requires you and your conversation partner to be available at the same time. This is probably not very tricky if you live in a Chinese-speaking environment, because you will have lots of native speakers in your time zone, so it won't be very hard to match when you have time with when they have time. But if you don't, it can be rather tricky. Like if China is seven hours ahead of you, it essentially means that when you get off work, all the Chinese people will have gone to bed already, and they don't want to talk to you. So being in different time zones can make having real-time conversations with native speakers rather difficult. And if you lead a busy life, or you simply don't have the time to set up these conversations, or if you think it's a bit scary, and you can use voice messaging because it allows you to record a message whenever it's convenient for you. And then it may be half an hour passes, maybe five minutes, maybe a day, and your conversation partner can record a message when they have time, and you can then listen to it and respond in your own time. So it's rather practical, even though of course it is slower. Okay, so I hope that these reasons for trying voice messaging convinced you to do that if you haven't already. But of course, voice messaging is not a substitute for real conversations. There are many skills, communicative strategies, and so on that you can really only develop when you're talking with people. And if you're going to do that eventually, you need to be able to parse things quickly enough. You need to be able to understand. You need to be able to. Construct your own sentences on the fly, and so on and so forth. But like I said, this is a stepping stone; it's not a substitute. So let's say that I have convinced you, and that you want to try out voice messaging. But what if you don't have anyone to talk to? What should you do then? This is, of course, a rather big topic, and it's something I will return to in a future episode. But for now, let's just say that you can, of course, use people in your surroundings. If you already have friends, you maybe have a teacher, you have people you hang out with. Just try voice messaging with them. Maybe you ask them if this is okay, or just try leaving a voice message and see what happens. 
If you don't know many native speakers, it depends a little bit on where you live. If you live in a Chinese-speaking environment, you can try practicing sports, hobbies, or trying to find other places or activities where you will naturally engage with native speakers. If that doesn't feel right or you don't want to do that, you can also, of course, try to find language exchange partners. And this also works online and it works if you don't live in China as well. So this would be I teach you English or Swedish and you teach me Chinese, that kind of setup. There are also many apps that do this and I mentioned HelloTalk, which is rather nice and is meant to do just this. I personally have a rather positive experience of language exchanges in general, but I should also mention that it takes some tries before you find people that you enjoy engaging with and kind of are on the same wavelength as you are. So don't give up if your first experience is not excellent, it might take a few tries. Finally, you can also pay someone to talk to you. And this sounds rather sad, but I mean it as a learning method. If you hire a tutor to talk to you, that is a good way of practicing Chinese. And of course, you should be able to practice using voice messaging as well, if you want to. Most tutors bill by the hour, so you probably need some kind of special deal with them, because obviously you don't have a voice conversation for an hour where you both sit on each end waiting for the other's message. That would be a little bit weird. But I think this kind of setup can definitely work, either on its own or in combination with more normal conversation lessons. And I want to point out here that you don't need your tutor to actually explain much to you or teach you grammar or something like that. But people who have experience talking with foreigners in Chinese are usually better able to adjust their language to your level, which can be very beneficial. Before we wrap up this episode, I would also like to point out that this method might sound very suitable for beginners, and it is, but it is also quite useful for advanced learners. For example, I sometimes go back to voice messages that I left yesterday to listen to them and see what I can spot in terms of pronunciation errors, what does my Chinese sound like, is there anything I could have improved here, and so on. And sometimes I can also ask someone to help me out, like listen to this and see what you think. And that works on a very advanced level as well, so voice messages are not just limited to beginners, nor to people who are anxious about having face-to-face -face conversations, they have real value for all serious students. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies!